welcome back everyone. It is a frosty morning right before Christmas here up at the building house and we have some super exciting updates. It's super fun filming some of these things where we can see some progress and some pretty things to show you. So we have all of our shingles on now which if we didn't explain this before the top part of the roof our house is two-story the top part is going to be shingled or is shingled and then on the one-story part of the garage the porch roof and the bump out for me and Ryan's bedroom that's just one story that is going to have standing seam and there is a little we call it an eyebrow right above the front door on the second floor that little eyebrow is going to have standing seam so let's turn around and look at this so over here in the garage you can see up on the second story part is shingle and then on top of the one story part of the garage is standing seam and you might have to step over this way a little bit ryan the porch roof is not on yet they're working on standing seam today i was too excited to wait till it was finished to film this so see above the little peak on the porch roof on the front door, right directly above that is like a little eyebrow or a little doohickey, we called it for the longest time. That little section is gonna have standing seam as well. So I can't wait, this is awesome. And I have a couple more updates to show you with the radiant heat inside. So let's go in there and check those out. Okay, we are standing here at Ryan and my big walk-in shower, and I just had to show you this awesome, awesome idea that our plumber had. He said to take some of the radiant heat tubing and bring it up through the shower. We're going to have a bench, like a seat that goes along the whole back of this wall of the shower for sitting on, putting shampoo bottles, shaving, whatever and this radiant heat tubing, which is gonna pipe hot water through it, is gonna heat up that seat. Super, super excited about that. Awesome idea. Wish I had thought of it myself. Okay, as you can see, Ryan is pounding the water tubing into the heat plates. So those water tubes will carry hot water which is going to be powered by our outdoor wood stove that's what's going to make this radiant heat warm up and he is almost done he doesn't have much more of this stuff to to uh, pound up in and then up in those floor joists they have to drill holes so they can run that tubing through one joist to the next and then, where's your loops at? And here's a better view of how they loop it at the end of a wall. And then they run it. The whole way down. And they go through the floor joists. And then over here, Look at that big bundle of radiant heating tubing there. They just hide a lot of this in the walls. Pretty big process installing this, but it is going to be well worth all the work. And these are the last lonely two little heat plates. Ryan needs to screw up. If I can reach, maybe they'll let me screw it up. <laughs> This, two little heat plates. Ryan's done a total of about 1,500 heat plates and 15,000 screws. For all you guys considering um, putting up radiant heat, I will tell you it is a lot of work. It takes a lot of time to put up um, those metal plates. The plates that we chose are a little different. There's many different types of ways you can put up your radiant heat. Um, for us, we decided to go with these. These are kind of like snap-in plates, and what you do is you screw them in. Each plate takes uh, 10 screws, and in this house, it's probably about 4,500 square feet. 
and we have a total of probably almost 1500 plates um, roughly about 15,000 screws. One thing for you guys who are deciding to DIY it, I will tell you some tidbits. We, did, we ran our tubes 8 inches on center, so in between each tube there is 8 inches. So when you go from one joist to the next joist, it's about 8 inches. The joists are spaced about 16 inches apart. And we used a spacer to put in each of those heat plates. They're aluminum. There's several different companies that make them. You got Upnor, you got Everhot, and there's a couple other brands as well. But this is half inch uh, PEX pipe. You have to get it. The PEX pipe has to be oxygen barrier. Otherwise, it kind of destroys your uh, boiler system and tends to deteriorate some of the metals um, that they use. So make sure if you're buying PEX pipe for radiant heat, you want to get the oxygen barrier. Now, whether you get there's several different kinds of PEX. You got PEX A, PEX B, uh, PEX C, and then there's a PEX aluminum PEX. Um, we went with the PEX B oxygen barrier. The PEX aluminum PEX they say is a lot harder to run through the floor. So just to let you know some of the tidbits. At the ends of each of these, if you're putting this up yourself, definitely leave at least 12 inches. I'd recommend probably a little bit more than that, probably 15 inches, because till you make those bends and turns and with that tubing, it is quite difficult to bend it around and go into the next joist. And it takes um, a lot of time. If you're trying it yourself, definitely get a second person. It goes so much faster. If I had to run this tube myself, it, I would have a lot of hours into it. For me, it took about an hour um, to run 20 plates. So we got lots of time put into this house. Running the tubing is a breeze compared to putting up those plates. So these you screw up. There's actually some that will wrap around. Uh, the aluminum will go completely around the tu PEX tubing. I might see if I can throw up a picture or find a picture for you here. But it goes around it. You can staple that up. But then you, the issue with that is you've got to fight with your PEX pipe as you're put, holding it up and trying to nail that up. To me, it sounded like a hard process. I like the idea of the process of just screwing up the plates and then hammering in the PEX pipe with um, a rubber mallet. It's lots of fun. I can't wait to test out the system and see how it works. Speaking of testing this system... We're actually planning to test the whole system by putting air into the system and to see if it lo loses pressure overnight to just, just to make sure there's no air leaks. We don't want any water coming into our house, you know. <laughs> Later on, once all the drywall is, and stuff is up. But if you have questions about it, hey, put them in the comments below and we will try to answer them as best as we can. Did a lot of research on this stuff, hoping it works well and excited to test the system. So guys, I wanted to, with the radiant heat, I'm also gonna tell you a little bit about the loops. Right here is where one of the areas where our piping from our upstairs, one bedroom and bathroom and half of our overhang right about to where the top staircase goes there that's how far over it goes for the first couple tubes so all those tubes are coming right there to that corner so that's covering about half of what we're calling our school rooms top of those stairs over that's covering that top floor we have a set of pipes there and we're gonna scroll across here we also have a bunch of pipes I don't know if you can see them but right about there we have some more pipes there going down and then right about there kind of diagonally from that we have about more going down from the upper floor above the garage with the radiant heat you can only uh we used half inch pex spars and with half inch pex you don't want to go over 300 feet if you can keep it at 250 that's the best to get your heat translated from the pipes to your room. So if you can keep it less than 200 or keep it right around 250 feet, um, that's ideal for getting the most heat out of the water. When you get up to the 300s or you go a little bit over, um, you're going to get less heat going into your floors. So definitely keep it less than 300. 250 is best though, guys. When we did loops, to keep them at 250, we're going to have a total of like 25 different loops in this house. So those are those 25 loops are all going to get connected to manifolds where all the water will come in. And we'll give you a, a video shot of that later on. Um, we don't have our manifolds in yet. They're on order. They're supposed to come in later this week. So we'll give you a shot of them. And when we hook it up to our outside door wood stove, we'll give you a little bit of advice 
a little bit of uh, video on that. We're super excited. We're also going to hook our boiler up to our hot water heaters to help cut down on costs of using electricity to heat our water as well. So lots going on with that wood stove. It's going to be worked a little bit harder than some, but definitely worth it. Um, if you have the wood, definitely the way to go in my boat. Definitely a lot of work. Um, we had wood at our old house in a wood stove and it kept pretty much our whole house heated pretty well. We ran very little propane. Used propane in the past cost a lot of money to run with propane. Our last house was a little bit smaller than this and I think we ran and that was in 2020 and I bet we spent three thousand dollars within the first three months just to heat it with propane. So we're excited about having the wood stove. I don't mind cutting and splitting wood. It's good exercise so yeah more to come on that.